from Free Production Racing Association Queensland round number two for Queensland Raceway. Brought to you by motorsportzone.com, carselling.com.au and Yokohama Tires. Round number two of the Improved Production Racing Association of Queensland right here at Queensland Race Night. I've got to tell you, uh, the first round we saw Morgan Park coming to play in this time, and a more familiar circuit for a couple of guys this weekend should act, well, we should act as a great catalyst for some great racing. Joining us this weekend after being awake for a little while, Chris O'Shaughnessy comes back in the fire breathing little sprinter. And of course, Herford's back as well this weekend, so the two litre category this weekend is going to be an absolute cracker. A couple of new faces this weekend we haven't seen for a while. One of those is a guy that's never been involved in the category before, is young Matt Swarbrook. Now, Matty Swarbrook, very accomplished speedway racer, bought a very, very quick motor car that he's bought Barry Glinton's uh, car that was being raced nationally right throughout Australia as a, as a production race car. And that car is going to be quick off the bat. So watch out for the big swarthy tippers car as it comes through the field today. Well, once again, there's a big field of cars this weekend bites through both categories, and I really expect the race to be absolutely chock-a-block. We've got two great days of competition, and they're coming your way right now. Well, qualifying was going to be a great result for so many drivers out there. In fact, Max Walbrook in a brand new motor car will be delighted with the results of the Swarley Tippers BMW. But it was going to be a, an interesting time because there was going to be a new man sitting on the pole position throughout the day. But here we saw the likes of Chris O'Shaughnessy coming back to the category after a long layoff. In fact, it hasn't been a long layoff. In fact, he's been everywhere racing a motor car except Australia. So O'Shaughnessy, the fire-breathing little thing going very, very well in qualifying. The, the battles throughout the field were, think, were intense and fact, Finally, someone like Rod Lynch was having a cracking run. So was High. Great performance out of both of these cars over, over the qualifying period. In fact, they were delighted. Well, the final times are in, and it's going to be that man again, Justin Wade, out on pole with a 59.3. But uh, Brennand, Homer, Isracina and Peck were very much in the play as well with Rod Lynch, Stephen Jukes, Matty Swarbrook on debut, very happy for him, and Bruce Cook and David Cliff, right on the money as well. The under two litre cars, well, different story altogether. O'Shaughnessy dominated that and put himself right up the pointy end of the field at the great one minute time. Maven, Casado, Hartnett, Hyde, Darcy Wade again very strong, Taylor Herford, Lee Wallace and Shane Klaus round out the nine cars in that category. Race one was a cracker. And these highlights will show you how intense it was up front, with Grimman getting a fantastic start. The power of the V8, too strong for that uh, BMW of Justin Wade, and he was leaving to turn number one and two for the first time. You can see by the in-car footage here at True Maven how intense it was. In fact, Maven was all over the back of this field, with Bruce Cook not exactly getting the start he wanted. Look at this battle, the side-by-side -side action here as we run the shorter track, not the long national track. In fact, we had to shorten right up through the uh, centre of the circuit, and this was unbelievable. A bit of contact here early on, Douglas the spinner, as they made their way through. And again, this uh, footage out the back of the car of uh, agreement as we look at Justin Wade in, the, uh, in this magnificent BMW as he tries to hold off uh, the field behind. In fact, it was Bruce Cook coming through. Cliff now, very strong performance from him this weekend, and it's a very strong performance here in performance as you drive straight down the inside of two very, very quick cars in a straight line. This Racino, a little wide, he comes out and does that fine breathing car over again. That little um, Suzuki does such a great job. Casado down the inside, and he will have a dominant run. Casado, Peter, is doing such a good job in this car, considering the fact that that is a two-litre car, that's right, a two-litre car running right towards the front. Darcy Wade again on the Honda Integra. Look how good he is under brakes. Confident down the outside. Not on the racing room. Will he come back on the inside? He does. Watch the under and over here. Comes over now back under. Gets the power down. Up on the inside of Hartman. Gets the uh, power 
through the uh, through the front wheel drive car onto the racetrack and finds a way up the inside. The two very very quick cars. Well, yeah, it gives away a little bit in capacity to those guys, but doesn't give it away in performance. Again, out front, Berman leading the car away, and I can tell you now, this will be short lived because Justin Wait will just wait for the tyres to start to wane and the brakes to start to go away. Here it is, you can see the performance level coming up the BMW, everything's at temperature now. And he will have a red hot crack under brakes down the inside, he does, disappears out of shot. And this is where Justin Wade's car is such a great race package. It may lack a little bit when it comes to straight line speed, but it is unbelievably quick. Oh, Casada, oh, there goes Skelton, up on the outside. Oh, he ran into the side of Maven's car. Both cars damaged. Skelton's car parked on the exit of the corner and that would put Peyton Maven's day as well. He would not get a run out of the car. Bruce Cook, he but on the exit of the corner there. Car got a little loose. And now we're looking at the uh, car with Jukes' this other being Gully in the category. As he uh, is being chased by Clift and the rest of the field he is Homer again. I just love this motor car as he's chasing this Racina in the uh, RX-7 now on the main straight. Straight line speed, this little Suzuki will not be beaten unbelievably quick. And again, we look at the uh, the small little Suzuki going through the shop in the Shane class. And really, to be honest, that car is giving everything away to everybody else, but he does such a great job of coming out supporting the category. I sure want to see. Well, the Cummins uh, Toyota is in fine form. And look at Bruce Cook again. The car gets a little loose on the exit of the corner. He's really driving it hard. Douglas here. Another one of the BMWs, a car that crosses over from another category to this as well, doing a great job out on track. Hartman again, Wade. This battle is, is uh, one, of the, one of the battles you just can't stop looking at. We're on board again with Wade. And to that, it'll be Justin Wade, who would have taken the honours that over this particular period. A car way too fast for everybody else. I tell you, he does a great job of peddling the BMW so well. Jason Grimmond in second. David Homer in the Suzuki comes home third. Isra Cena, Bruce Cook with Steve Jukes, David Clift, Rod Lynch, Matty Swarbrook home in ninth, and Warwick Douglas home in tenth. The other two leader guys putting on a great run for Motorsport Zone, but it was the under two leader category that was where a couple of the cars were really on the on the pace, and that was Chris O'Shaughnessy. Well and truly up the front end of it with Peter Casado, Mark Hyde, Hyde, Darcy Wade, Greg Hartner, Troy Maven, Taylor Herford, Lee Wallace and Shane Klaus rounding out the car selling .com.au under two litre category. Well, race two, we're going to bring you the four races. They come uh, round to take the green flag for the first time and Justin Wade again on that pole position but it is that car of Remmons on the outside. It's a superior performance out of the big V8. Does a great job. Look at Darcy Wade there. Down the inside of Matty Swallow. Down the inside. And the car Rod Lynch and the little bit and the little uh, potent uh, Honda Integra is such a great package when it comes to uh, I suppose the performance that he knows he can get out of it. Again, look at this battle up front. It is the uh, Grimmond and Wade battle. The battle of the two V8s, although one being German and one of those, of course, being the Aussie bred V8 of Grimmond. Unbelievable performance. Shane Class here at the back of the field, but doing a great job staying on the back of these guys. David Clift again now. The long legs of the Vad will serve him well down the back straight as he goes down the inside. Right up there beside Chris O'Shaughnessy, but oh, Jukes again, the break of potential out of that BMW is so strong. He does a great job of keeping it back. Bruce Cook up on the inside of Homer. Have a look at this. There again is that uh, car of Max Warbrook, the pretty pink BMW. There is Shane Class again, right on the tail of these guys and doing a great job. This is all a learning curve for him as Justin Wade gets up on the inside. Can he get the power down? The Grimo's, uh, well, the Grimo's Commodore is doing such a great job of uh, keeping Justin Wade at bay, but it's only a matter of time before Justin Wade will find the chink in this armour. Is it going to happen right here as Wade sneaks up on the inside, gets a bit silent, gets the power down early. Up on the ripple strip on the edge of the five. Now it's a drag race down in the turn number six. Wade comes across, can he cover? He doesn't. Grimmond down the outside. Now they'll go into the braking zone for six. And Grimmond will lead him away. Look at Bruce Cook. Just waiting around like a dog after scraps of the main feed in front of him and he's doing such a fantastic job again. The battle between Swarbrook and the two leader cars. Now, to give you a bit of a heads up, Matty Swarbrook does not have the right diff ratio on that BMW this weekend. In fact, he's got the diff ratio on it to Bathurst. So it's not really what you'd like here at Queensland Raceway. Right, right. Again, this fantastic uh, battle. Maven, we're looking back, Hartnett. Look at this little uh, SR20 power that missing. 
And again, we're now looking at from the back of uh, Grimont's car. As again, just a wave looms up on the inside. There goes Bruce Cook. Can they get the job done? They're side by side out of turn number two. And Cook looms up on the inside as well. It'll be a drag race down to turn number three. Will the V8 have the superior horseback? Can he drag Can he drag race Bruce Cook? Well, he does. He gets him, but down on the brakes. Big look at Justin Wade into turn number three. Can't get the job done. There's Bullrook again and Hyde. There's Maven and Rod Lynch. Well, problems again for the Evo. Does not have a happy run with this car and he must be getting so frustrated with its reliability. Unfortunately, Rod Lynch parks it up here again in the... In the uh, well, there's an instant replay of Justin Wade now up on the inside of uh, Grimmond as they make the way through turn number two. And he gets the drive up the inside. You can see he's in third gear. Now fourth, down the back straight, all the way through the sixth gear. Here's Troy Maven. Wickedly fast motor car. So good under brakes. Very lightweight Mark One Escort. Deep under brakes down the inside of Darcy Wade. Wade in the middle Integra. Not going to give that away too easily. There's Peter Casado and Max Wardle. This battle between those two has gone on since qualifying. And the big BMW and the, and the nimble little Mark II Escort are going to battle right throughout this race again. Again, Darcy Wade and the Honda. This is an amazing little car because you can consider the fact that he's giving away not even two litres out of that car. Great job. This is the Chris O'Shaughnessy now and this is Look at this. The fire breathing little 1600 twin cam of O'Shaughnessy. Man, this is, as we said, spent so much time overseas racing and endurance events. This is just a, a welcome return. Jason Grimmon now. The rear view. Justin Wade's got past and now it is all this car of Bruce Cook. And Cookie will be up under the rear bumper bar of this car as much as he can. A new drivetrain of Bruce Cook's car now. No longer is it the uh, the normal antique turbocharged two litre engine. It's the more current uh, spec turbocharged engine in that car. And it's still getting to grips with how that car is delivering the power to the ground. Well, look at this. Justin Wade leads Grimmond. Then back to the car of, uh, of course, Bruce Cook. But have a look under brakes. This battle between Isra Cena and also uh, the car of uh, O'Shaughnessy is a cracker. But right in there is Jukes as well. I'll tell you what, you just can't separate these three guys. It is battles within battles. There's Homer looming at the back of this. And again, Isra Cena and O'Shaughnessy. The fiery little Cummins Toyota is on fire this weekend. He is driving the wheels off it. For Naven now. All right, side by side. This is the exit of turn number three. And in towards turn four. And again, Maven gets such good drive out of that car, gets a, the, the power to the ground and dives up the outside and gets round the outside of, uh, of the car a high. That's a fantastic bit of driving, considering the fact you had to outbrake him and, uh, and really did a great job of keeping the car on track, as you can see, high, exploring every bit of track. Here's Douglas in the BMW. Strong performance from him this weekend. Carl's good in qualifying, and it's become better. Herford, again. This car's got quicker and quicker and better and better as the years have gone on. They've been doing such a great job of bringing the car out of the racetrack that uh, they have uh, really improved in the lap times considerably each time they come out. Again, Bruce Cook, look at this. Max in the car with the curves. Very poetic little car when you watch it move around and, uh, and it's never pedal any harder by this bike. Bruce Cook under brakes, brings Grimmond. Really just can't do much about the pace, but gets up on the inside. Gets the power down, and that might be all he needed to get away, but it'll need a big V8 power down here. So, look at this. We can see now that he's going to get a run and get to turn number one, but Cook's not going to let him have it. Big guy on the ranks. Gets down to turn one. And again, this is uh, one of those dominant battles between these two. Look at that. Cook gets a little loose on the exit again. Lucy Cook trying so hard to keep in contact with Justin Wade in front, throwing caution to the wind, having a red hot run through turn number two. Well, look at this. You know, Sean will see us for a scene of battle. And just in there, let's throw Jukes in for the battle as well. Look at this. The car is cooking against the side that's coming out of turn number six. Jason gets a run up on the inside. That there's nothing Bruce Cook could have done with that. He'd get out of the front and try and stabilise the car. And uh, Grimmon gets a free pass. Maven, Hyde, with this battle with two escorts going at it. Oh, Hyde gets it nice and loose on the exit of the corner as well. Here's this Casato Swarbrook battle. This will go on right throughout the weekend, these guys, I can bet you. In fact, it's it's Casato that races against Matt's father continually. And now there's a change in the guard. It's Casato up on the inside of the Swarley Tippers BMW. 
the battle. Justin Wade, uh, sorry, son of Justin Wade, young uh, young Darcy, doing such a great job there with Hartman chasing down. But here's the Swarley Tippers car, the BMW, the former Berwick Litton car, doing a great job over here. We set how, how well the car's going, but Ron Differay show entirely to be out here running sprint racing, more suited to Bathurst. Now, just passing class, sun to lap the field is Justin Wade. As the rest of the field tags through, look at this uh, the little blue Suzuki Swift. He's so potent in that car. I just can't think that any other time that you would imagine a Suzuki Swift doing such low lap times around Lakeside unless it's being towed by an F111. The battle between these guys has been immense right throughout the uh, closing laps of this. And again, Darcy Wade finds a way down the inside of uh, the lap traffic of Douglas and now they make their way forward. Class, he's got the field closing down and the kid will keep out of harm's way of the edge if you uh, turn up six and the field will go by nice and easily. Class, very, very evident. Look at this again, Swargle. Casado playing peekaboo with each other. The big heavy BMW, it, it, would, it would probably have four or five hundred kilos of weight on that on the uh, Escort. Again, Taylor Herford. This car is such a, such a good little package nowadays. But it's that man there who leads the race, Justin Wade, just too good for him. As the laps start to tick away, and it will be a case of uh, catch me if you can, as Justin Wade lights a blaze, drives away from the rest of the field. Look at this, this ongoing battle between us, Racina, and the car that they want to see. These guys that will go at this the full length of the race. It's so good to watch. There's Swalbrook again in Casado. <laughs> I tell you, entertaining racing right back out through the field as well. As the guys make their way down the long back straight, but Justin Wade. This will be a fantastic event for him. He will be absolutely delighted with the way the car's been running. And so he should be. The car's been well and truly on fire. Check and flag unfolding. And it'll be Justin Wade again. He will take another round with another race win here at uh, Queensland Raceway. A dominant run by him. Well, there's, there's Brimmond, Bruce Cook and Homer. What a great result for those four as they take the final podium places. It was Justin Wade in the BMW first with Jason Grimmond, Bruce Cook, David Homer, Tony S. Racina, Stephen Jukes, David Cliff, Matty Swarbrook, or Douglas and Rod Lynch take out the honours in the other two litre motorsportzone.com car, cars, race number two. In the under two litre, what well, a different story altogether as Chris O'Shaughnessy and Pierre Casado fought out for the honours there with Troy Maven, Darcy Wade, Greg Hartnett, Taylor Herford, Shane Class, Mark Hyde and Lee Wallace both not finishing. Carselling.com.au under two litre, another great category as well. Race three highlights now. Well, she was a wet old affair on Sunday morning for the guys. And well, isn't rain the big equaliser? Sometimes you think it will be. And you think that that man right there, the yellow Evo four wheel drive car, will be on song. And yes, he does. Taylor Murphy. Can't see that. Look at these four wide into the corner. Will they sort themselves out? Yes, they do. Politely. Letting everybody go through the wet weather really uh, putting pay to anybody having a, a big bomb dive. Oh, Brucey Cook tries to get down the inside, but the car gets a little loose on the east of turn number two. And this Racina now. Look at that Shaughnessy again. This battle Swarbrook. The former Speedway star. Well, this might come to him the wet weather. This might do him the world of good in the Swarley Tippers BMW. Troy Maven up on the grass. We're not going to stop that there, Troy. No pitchman, no grip, that uh, will be a problem and unfortunately he really uh, paid the price of getting off track. Trying to uh, dive down the inside of the car. So much windscreen down and flying off there as the wipers tear that apart. Look at, look at the visibility here. This is Darcy Wade and the little Honda and Tigra on the outside. Eddie Casado. Casado, although uh, that car is very, very nimble and quick, it is the wet weather that is probably uh, limiting the tyre performance out of that car. Look at Bruce Cook again. Loving it. This mighty fire breathing Suzuki Swift. This is where it will come into its own. Although it'll be fairly twitchy, I'd say, Frick. It'll be a little bit nervous to drive if he tries to get the power down. It'll be tall steering like all hell as they make their way through uh, the inside of the circuit. Look at home. I love this car. I just think it's immaculately prepared and it really does a great job of showing that uh, a little car with a big heart can do very, very well. 
Well, as Sean has seen, probably another bit over the car with the car, as Sean has seen with the uh, Cummins Toyota doing a great job there, sticking sort of right up the middle. This is not about horsepower today in the wet weather, this is all about finesse and drivability, and this is where a great driver will succeed. Casado now having a, having a run back on the inside of Darcy. Darcy Wade. Or to Rod Lynch. Big spinners there, look at this. Spinners going everywhere, in fact, and Rod Lynch was one of those. Car got a little loosening the four drive, losing traction. Darcy Wade breaks sideways, gets it, grabs it. Great save by him. Now we're looking at inside the car of, uh, of Herford. Now, in fact, Herford was spinning in front of us, it was. And that's the car of, uh, well, that would have been Maven we had the onboard shot with just then. Well, tre treacherous conditions. Everybody pushing so hard. That was a probably a, 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 an inevitable part of what was going to happen for a moment. Too late on the outside. Can't pull the car up. It's uh, out in the marbles. No grip for him there. Great save though too by uh, by uh, Maven to get that car back on track. Great driving by him. That was got to love hard. The battle. The, the front wheel drive car comes into its own here with the BMW struggling. And look at class in the wet weather. That car's a different car altogether now. He's doing such a great job. Wallace, as class and Wallace go side by side. I haven't seen much of Wallace this weekend, but he really had a great time. Perfect. Well, trying out for the international drift session in the uh, Corolla, but that wasn't going to work for him. Look at this side by side action. Three wide as Hartnett and Maven. And again, the car hide comes through. Maven can't get the car to turn a fair bit of understanding into the corner. Look at Swarbrook and Casado. How many times have we said that this weekend? Big BMW chasing the Casado transport car of, uh, of Casado through the crossover. The BMW totally outclassed on weight. But uh, Swarbrook and Exodus are setting speedway guy doing a great job in the wet. Look at this, Bruce Cook. Oh, the car got really loose as he tried to get the power down. You could just see it just snap over steer as he, as he went around the outside. He's on the outside of Grimm and Ned trying to find a way past. Not much room there, but it would have been a great race for everybody. But Justin Wade again, too good. Bruce Cook home in second. Grimm in third. David Homer. Stephen Jukes. David Clift. Matty Swarbrook. Tony S. Racina. Warwick Douglas and Rod Lynch round out. Didn't get the finish in the top 10 for the motorsportzone.com over two litre category. The under two litres brought to us by carselling.com.au. Well, it was Peter Casado again with Darcy Wade. Greg Hartnett, Mark Hyde, Troy Maven, Lee Wallace, Shane Class, and O'Shaughnessy and Herford declared not finishers. Well, the final race of the weekend for the guys, race four highlights, a dry race track this time, although the ground on the outside's a little wet, so everybody's gonna have to uh, make sure they stay on the black stuff this time around, but out in front of this right homer here. Doing a great job of chasing through Bruce Cook. Yeah, that's right, Bruce Cook out in front of the field chasing. Got a cracking start in the drive. Now, look at that. Again, this BMW, who is really doing a great job of developing that car. And of course, we can't say enough about uh, the way they got that car run, run this weekend. Swarbrook getting a better start this time as well. Mid pack. Look at uh, the fight back from Rod Lynch here as he finds his way back to the field. Oh, Troy Maven and Hyde going at it again. Side by side action. All those out and escorts. Unbelievably quick. Both of these guys sewing so well. But Hyde could not do anything about the brake. He potentially has car down the outside. And here he, and I tell you what, look at him. He had a big look at Darcy Wade on the outside. Hyde back on the inside now. This is between turn four and five. And again, themselves move very heavily now that the uh, track conditions have come for them. Oh, Cliff getting a little wide on the outside. That's allowed Swarbrook to dive up on the inside. And look at this battle of further back, high under siege from Hartnett. And this is fantastic racing. These, uh, look at the uh, of speed here at the moment. Just, there's nothing Darcy Way can do about the rapid little escort chasing him down through the back part of the, or through the front part of the circuit on the main straight. Justin out in front now, Justin Wade. Doing a great job with the BMW. Oh, very strong this weekend. There's Swarbrook again up on Clift. There's Casado chasing down as well. Oh, Hyde. Inside other rakes, does he get it stopped? I don't think he does. But again, look at Rod Lynch finally getting a good run out of the car, the, uh, the big Evo. Having a better run this time around. Look at this side by side, by side action. Perfect. Coming back to the field as well. There is the car in Viscera Sea, but down the inside of the BMW. And I can see that BMW 
AEW is, is doing a great job of defending. You just can't say, look at Hyde now, through the back of the uh, field. Oh, problems. Oh, an engine gone in Hyde's car, so the Escort. Done an engine. You can see Hart and take evasive action. He's got it all over, all over his windscreen. And that will put pay to his weekend. Yes, we're seeing it now. Look at the, look at the battle through the back. There's, there's the, uh, the line on us at this stage with uh, Justin Wade. Oh, there's another engine problem. Or, or, no, that it, it is. That's Clift. So Clift is gone. An engine for him as well. So Clift pulls up, gets the car off the racing line and pulls it across. But look, Justin Wade. Just going to be too good for these guys. There's another dominant performance from Wade. The Rhino Insurance car is just so good here at Queensland Raceway. Wade takes a win again. Fantastic weekend for him. Race four results. Justin Wade in the BMW. Jason Grimman home in second. Tony Isracina comes home in third. Stephen Jukes. Matty Swarbrook home in fifth. Great result for him. Dave Homer. Rod Lynch. Warwick Douglas. And Clift and Cook declared not finishes. Over two litre results brought to us by motorsortzone.com. Under two litre results for carselling.com.au. Will Peter Casado and Troy Mayborn. A great battle that was over the weekend for these guys. Darcy Wade, Greg Hartnett, Taylor Herford, Lee Wallace and the Pulsar. Chain class down the lap, but what a great result for him. And Mark Hyde and Chris O'Shaughnessy declared non finishes. What a great weekend it was. What a fantastic racetrack to bring these potent, very, very fast cars to. Well, round two was a cracker and it will unfold to next time we go racing. Until then, folks, sit back. We will have more racing coming your way in the upcoming months. You've been watching the Queensland Improved Production Racing Association, round number two from Queensland Raceway. Brought to you by motorsportszone.com, carselling.com.au, and Yokohama Ties.